second episode in our series going over some forgotten NBA teams. The first episode was on the 2015 Atlanta Hawks. Check that out after this video is done. And today we're going to be talking about the Washington Wizards during the Gilbert Arenas era. Yeah, you know, Arenas, he was a player that was ahead of his time. He could shoot, he could get to the basket, he could dribble like crazy. He was crazy on the court. He was also a little crazy off the court. Before we start talking about the Gilbert Arenas led Wizards, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. So let's talk about how Gilbert Arenas ended up on the Wizards because the story just makes no sense. So it came down between the Wizards and the Clippers, two just absolutely desirable destinations. Just well run in the early 2000s, right? Yeah, the two places you want to go to. I mean, the only reason really he wanted to go there because money. money. LA and DC too, I <laughs> yeah, mean. Yeah, that is true. But it was down to those two teams, so he flipped the coin around 10 times. Eight of the 10 times it landed on the Clippers side, so you'd think you'd probably go to the Clippers. Also, on the way to meeting with the Wizards, he got a migraine, but Gilbert Arenas said no. Migraine don't says go don't go to the Wizards. Coin, coin says, says don't, don't go, go to the Wizards. Yeah. I'm going go. there. So when life tells him go right, he goes left. Yeah. I mean, imagine being his agent through all of this. <laughs> he's going back and forth between the Clippers and the Wizards, and he's like, you know what? The universe is telling me, go to the Clippers, go to the Clippers. You know what? Tell him I'm going to the Wizards. I mean, his agent at that point is just going to be like, I better get a solid commission for <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, like, I'm just in it for the commission at this point. Whatever you decide, that's on you. Also, the first year with the Wizards, they were just straight up trash. They're they the Wizards. Yeah, they're the Wizards. It made sense. They won 25 games, and they were 13th in the East. Just trash. I mean, they had Kwame Brown. What do you expect? <laughs> During the offseason, they'd add another start of the roster. They'd pick up Antoine Jameson in a very good trade. They sent out Devin Harris, who was the fifth pick that year. They sent out Christian Leitner and Jerry Stackhouse to the Mavs. And they got back Antoine Jameson. He'd previously played with both Gilbert Arenas and Larry Hughes. So this was a pretty good pickup for them, I'd say. Yeah, definitely in hindsight. At the time, though, I mean, giving up Devin Harris, who was the fifth overall pick, and Jerry Stackhouse. Like, I know Jerry Stackhouse eventually kind of just became a role player, but back in his day, Jerry Stackhouse could play. Goddamn, though, this is a good move. Yeah, very good move. And at the beginning of the 2004-2005 season, I didn't know about this. Gilbert Arenas was actually suspended for one game. Can you guess what it was for? Uh, speeding? No, nope, it had something to do with a gun. He had an unregistered gun. Only one game, though. Nothing didn't pull it out on anyone else. Like, imagine doing that as an NBA player. <laughs> But a little bit of foreshadowing for I the future I don't think this there. will come back to bite him in any way. No, they, he'll learn from this and nothing with guns will ever happen again. Hey, the Wizards, though, they improved. They went from 25 wins to 45 wins. Funny thing about the Wizards, though, is this was their best record since the 1970s. 45 wins. <laughs> that is crazy. I'm sorry. That is just... I poor Wizards fans. <laughs> Arenas and Jameson were both all-stars, though. And Jameson, Arenas, and Larry Hughes, a deadly big three. They combined for 67 points. And nowadays, maybe that doesn't sound sound too crazy, but back in 2005, that's, that's honestly like 80 points today. Yeah, but two all-stars for a 45-win team? It, I mean, it's the East back in the day. <laughs> what do you expect? True, fair enough. First round, though, they made the playoffs for the first time since 1997. It was against the Chicago Bulls, a little 4-5 matchup. Chicago took both games one and two. Wizards won game three and game four to even the series, and game five was just wild. First, the Bulls were down 10 points with 41 seconds left, but then Gennaro Pargo decided, you know what? I'm turning into prime staff. Gennaro Pargo, that's a name I've not heard in a while. I didn't even know he did this, but dude hit like three threes. Even with the Wizards blowing the lead, Arena said, you know what? I'm calling game and hit a game winner to give them the win. Hey, they called him Agent Zero for a reason. He was Hibachi, instant offense. Dude was clutch, too. The Wizards got another close one in Game 6, won their first playoff series in over two decades. I thought our 14-year drought was bad. <laughs> yeah, two decades just to win a playoff series. Imagine that. But they did run into D-Wade and Shaq in the second round, and they just bodied them. Yeah, just gave them the word. So you know what? A pretty good season, all things considered. You win 45 games, you win a playoff series. Offseason was a little bit interesting. They let Larry Hughes walk to the Cavs, which, you know, that's that's a big hit. And then they traded Kwame Brown to the Lakers for Karan Butler. What were the Lakers on? I, I don't know. I tried to even look up, like, if there was any information or, like, something that happened that caused this. I literally don't know. I think they were just thinking, you know what? Kwame Brown. He's, he's got potential. He's got potential. Maybe we can fix him. Even then, though, they pick up Karan Butler. They kind of 
Bears struggled the next season. They went 12 and 18 their first 30 games. Overall, they regressed a bit and they only won 42 games this year. But Gilbert Arenas was just a bucket. Averaged 29.3 points a game. Fourth in the league in points per game. I mean, I can tell you why they regressed because it was those three and not a whole lot else. I mean, Brendan Haywood was an average player at best. Antonio Daniels, who? I, I don't remember him. An okay bench player. Exactly. About it. I mean, Jamison Butler and Arenas, that was the highest scoring trio in the NBA and you only win 42 games. Well, they had to be. Unlucky for them, they'd play LeBron in the first round. The series was tied 1-1 after two games in Cleveland, but then game three, LeBron hit a game winner on him. Little contested layup. Wizards even up the series in game four. And then game five, was was just the Gilbert Arenas and LeBron James duel. LeBron goes for 45, Arenas goes for 44, but LeBron gets the better of him. Hits a game-winning layup in overtime. Two game winners in one series for LeBron. But he's not clutch. He's not clutch, Not guys. clutch at all. Doesn't have the clutch gene. Gotta remember, he's not clutch. Game six, must win for the Wizards. They're up late in this game, but then they blow the lead a little bit, and then at the end of the game, they're down three. They need a bucket. And Gilbert Arenas, especially back for 2006, he's just a deep ass three to tie the game up. This is a deep three in modern NBA. In 2006, this was like from the moon. <laughs> That's basically a half court shot back then. The game then goes to overtime and the Wizards, they got this game basically wrapped up. They're up one point. There's 15 seconds left. They have the ball. They get it to Gilbert Arenas, an 82% free throw shooter. And he proceeds to clank the first. And then LeBron goes up to him after he clanks the first and says, if you miss this, you know who's going to end the game. Well, clearly he was talking about Cavs bench warmer Damon Jones, right? Yeah, Damon Jones. Because Arenas went on to miss the free throw and the Cavs, they don't go to LeBron because he gets double teamed. They go to Damon Jones in his first minutes of the game and he hits a three from the corner. Dude said, let me just end a series real quick. <laughs> I've just been chilling, waiting for my moment. It's time to just end this series. You know, Mike Brown gave him that look on the bench. He's like, Damon, it's time. <laughs> yeah, it's your time. <laughs> And during the 2006 offseason, I vividly remember this. Gilbert Arenas was cut from the FIBA World Cup team, and this just pissed him off. So he said, you know what? I'm dropping 50 on the Suns, coached by Mike D'Antoni, and I'm dropping 50 on the Blazers, coached by Nate McMillan, because they were both coaches for Team USA. Got to give a little bit credit to him. He did drop 54 on Phoenix. Okay. And then in his first game against Portland, he dropped nine. <laughs> Nine points? Nine points. What, did he get clamped by Sebastian Telfair? I think Jared Jack was just clamping okay. his ass up. <laughs> Also, during media day this year, Gilbert Arenas would tell reporters that he adjusted his house in D.C. to Colorado altitude. What? So he was always above sea level. I don't even know how he did this. Somehow they just hired a company to adjust the altitude. So in the house, the air pressure, I have no idea, but he did do this. Gilbert, I, ha I hate to break it to you, but almost anywhere in the continental United States, you are above sea level, <laughs> my guy. In Miami Beach, you're technically above sea level and they're on the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what is this? I don't know. It's Gilbert Arenas. The dude's just insane. But he had some insane games because in December of this season, he dropped 68-8 and eight on Kobe in Staples Center. Probably his best game ever. Really doesn't get talked about. 60 points in Staples Center on Kobe? In 2006, too? They had a solid start going 27-17 the start of the season. Gilbert Arenas was an all-star starter. Cron Butler was an all-star reserve. And also, I got to mention these jerseys. For whatever reason, even though they look straight up like a Duracell battery. I love these jerseys. <laughs> these jerseys suck. I'm sorry. They look awful. The gold jersey with the black shorts, it doesn't work. Things near the end of the season, though, would fall apart. Cron Butler and April would injure his hand. He'd miss the rest of the season. And then Jared Wallace would basically land on Gilbert Arenas' knee. He'd tear his meniscus, and he'd be out for the season. And really, from then on out, Gilbert Arenas was just never healthy, and it was kind of, in a lot of ways, the end of his career. Yeah, they got beat by the Cavs for the second straight year. This time, they got swept. And going to the 2007-2008 season, Arenas, he tried to make a comeback, but... Once again, he'd have to have knee surgery. He only played 13 games. Because of Butler and Jamison, though, the Wizards, they still managed to make the playoffs. Once again, they ran into LeBron for the third straight year. I, who did they piss off? I don't know. <laughs> LeBron just owned this team. I, one of my favorite ever LeBron dunks, by the way, in game one. I, he looks like he's floating on air. Arenas did come back for the playoffs, but 
basically he said the only reason he did it was to lock up an extension that offseason. And after being injured for basically two straight years, they signed him to a six-year, $111 million deal. One of those solid Washington Wizards <laughs> roster moves we talked about at the beginning. Just a well-run franchise. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Apparently the story is the owner was about to die and oh. he told Gilbert Arenas that you got me out of the Jordan years, you made the playoffs, whatever money you want, we'll sign you the deal. And the next owner will have to clean up this mess. <laughs> yeah, it's the next owner's problem. I'm almost out of here. That's his problem. <laughs> That's dark and hilarious. <laughs> yeah. The next year, Arenas once again had surgery, only played two games, but this is the season I did meet Gilbert Arenas after a game. He didn't play, he was in a suit, but hella nice guy. He signed something for me, he chatted up for a bit. So I got love for Gilbert Arenas just because of that moment. And I did not experience that moment, so I'm just very neutral on this <laughs> subject. <laughs> but like we said, this was basically the end of this era with the Wizards for Gilbert Arenas. They'd missed the playoffs for the next two seasons, but we need to talk a little bit about some locker room stuff that happened that really ended the era. Locker them. room stuff is putting it lightly. <laughs> right. <laughs> In December 2009, Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenton allegedly, I don't know if, did they actually? I think they did. They did. Drew guns on each other in the locker room due to an argument about a past gambling debt. So, Not how I would have settled an argument, but you know what? I mean, how much realistically could he have lost? I don't know. It definitely wasn't worth doing this. They both got suspended for the rest of the season and Javaris Crittenton, this ended his career. He was already like a, a who type guy, like a no-namer. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas, this didn't quite end his career, but it basically did. He got traded the next season. And the stories from this locker room are just insane. For example, Trevor Booker, who only played with Arenas for like half a season, he said, players apparently once cut up someone's suit. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. Just because? Just, just as like a little funny prank, you know? You just got pranked. Someone took a sh** in another person's shoe, as you do. Are these grown adults or children? Technically, yes. <laughs> Maturity level, no. God. And finally, just to add some more just childlike fun to it, apparently on the road, they would break into other players' hotel rooms and apparently just beat the out of them, tie them up, and, you know, I don't even know. That is insane. Who does that? This reads like that teenagers in a Friday the 13th movie would do before they get killed off by Jason. Like, oh, we're gonna go break in to Cabin 4B <laughs> and just beat the out of these guys and then Jason just like lodges a machete through them. Like, what is going on here? I don't know, but these are grown adults on an NBA team. So what do you guys think of this Wizards team? Did they have any potential if Gilbert Arenas didn't get injured? If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like. And hey, while you're here, check out some of our other content as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.